Uh, so imaginary numbers, and you would say, why well, there seems to be enough numbers, why do we need to make more? Uh, which is a pretty good question. Uh, and the answer to that is, is that it opens up a whole new field of mathematics. Okay, so the first thing we need to know is what the heck is an imaginary number, and then we can talk a little bit about what it's used for, which I only know the surface of, uh, because that's uh, kind of the scope of my job. Your scope of your life is to, if you're interested in it, go find out more about it. Okay. So tell me something about this as of today. Right now, for the next 30 seconds, what do you know about that? You should say you should, there should be something about this that you want to say. <coughs> Uh, uh, so you said you can't. What? What can't? What can't? What? What's wrong with this? You can't what? So the you can't part is correct. I don't know. He's now he doesn't know his name. Okay. So not even even before that, you can't what? Square root of negative. Okay. So why can you not square root of negative? Yeah, good job. Okay, so right, uh, square root means what times itself gives you that number, but there's no number that multiplied by itself is negative, right? So you, you say, well, negative and times a negative is a positive, and a positive times a positive is a positive, so you can never get to a negative. And so then we would say here, like, you know, the, the sloppy way to say it is like, well, you can't do it. The better way to say it is this is not a real number, okay? And so then up until right now, you would say, I'm not, I can't do anything with it because it's not a real number. But as of now, you can't say it anymore because this is an example of an imaginary number. Okay? And so imaginary numbers actually show up in all kinds of crazy places. Okay? For us directly, uh, what we're leading ourselves into are solving quadratics. Okay? And normal quadratics cross the x-axis, and these are the zeros. And that's a big deal to find zeros, and we'll explain that more here in a week or so. But you can move graphs anywhere that you want, and so then, you know, they could be up here. And then all of a sudden they don't have any zeros, which is not really correct. They don't have any real zeros because all real zeros are on the x-axis. And this doesn't even cross the x-axis. But there's still stuff that we can do to find imaginary zeros. Okay, and so that's where we're going to deal with imaginary numbers directly. But these actually show up in electrical engineering and in circuitry. And this is the part where I say, uh, don't ask me why, because I don't really know, and it's like not super complicated, but I never really got into it. But, you know, electricians, uh, does anyone have an electrician in the family? Nobody in here? Yeah, they, they actually have to deal with negative, or I'm sorry, imaginary numbers. And again, I don't know the whole ins and outs of it. In fact, that's pretty much all I know. Okay, I just know that they show up there. The other thing that we're going to use them for is to talk about complex numbers, which is really where the, um, the electricians use it, is complex numbers. So an imaginary number is part of a complex number. But the cool thing for us also would be that they form fractals. Does anyone know what a fractal is? Okay, they're, they're cool. So, but we're going to talk about that after a bit. We're just doing some introductory stuff right now. So the definition is really the square root of negative 2 isn't the important part. It's the square root of negative anything. And so we're going to say the square root of negative 1, we're going to call i. Okay, and so that's our imaginary number. And so if we go back to the square root of negative 2, you could rewrite this, hopefully, or at least that you can accept that this is a true statement. Is this okay with everybody? Right, because you're allowed to multiply inside numbers and things like that. Okay, so really that wouldn't be how you write it. You would say that this is really I radical 2. How's that? Okay. Now there's a little bit more to this definition, and that's why you know, we're going we're gonna to add to this idea, but just not today. We're going to do it today, but we're not going to do it today. 
So the good news is uh, also the same as the bad news. It's, a, you know, I'm telling you right here that the definition of an imaginary number is square root of negative 1. So why is that good news for us for right now? Or bad news for us, depending on the person. And if you're not sure which one, just check your quiz score. And then you'll know which way this is good or bad news. Because if it, uh, Well, okay, so it, an imaginary number is the square root of negative 1. So what does that mean in general about the rules that we're going to talk about? No, you, didn't, you, you should not. Because what, what are all the rules we just talked about? Be begins with an R and rhymes with radicals. What? Radicals. Yeah, so it's just, a, it's just a radical, so all the rules are the same as what we just spent the last uh, couple weeks on. So all these radical rules are still exactly the same. We just have this one little thing now. That negative needs to be an imaginary number. And so a super, super important part about this. So if you know all your radical rules, you're, then you're going to be super happy from here on. This is the most important thing. Like if you're someone that knows all your radical rules, this is the important thing. Well, this is the important thing whether you don't know them or not. If you say this is an uh, imaginary number, you better make it into an imaginary number the very first thing that you do. Okay? And then everything will take care of itself from there. Is that okay? All right. So here's how you think about this. Is this an imaginary number? Okay, then you need to deal with it first. And I'm going to write it out right now, but then the first step doesn't make sense to write out. Yeah, right. So I'm going to write it out first, but this will be the last time. Right? Is this, is this okay to say to everyone? Okay, and then so then, like he said, this is going to be I square root of 25. Okay, square root of 25 is just 5, so then this is 5I. And you can write it I5 if you want, but that's, it's the whole number that comes before I. Is that right? Or the non-radical, I guess. All right, sweet. That's, ba that's basically the whole thing. Okay. Is it an imaginary number? Deal with it right now. So what is the very first thing you should do? Is that okay with everybody? Okay, now what else do you need to make sure you do? Simplify. Okay, so then, you know, 27 is 9 and 3, and 3 and 3, and so what does that do for you? Okay, so I'm going to, yeah, so 3, it, I'm not going to take off for the, it being in a weird order, but this would be the order that you'd want it in. Does everyone understand where that came from? Okay, make sure that you get this part down, because this is where people make mistakes is about the signs of this kind of stuff. That first term says negative square root of negative 76. Those two negatives are not related to each other. They, have, they don't affect each other at all, because you have to say that this is an imaginary number, and so you have to deal with that first before anything else happens. So then this would become negative i square root of 76 plus i squared to 125. Okay, so then that, now we have this negative i out there. You have to deal with the imaginary number first for this to be easy. Okay, so, but now what do we, yeah? It's a 7. Is that? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. It's like, it's, it's like the 7 is tipping his cap to the ladies on the way by. Oh, uh, we used to do that. We were much more chivalrous than you guys are today. Ladies, I feel bad for you. I'm growing up in an era where guys are as uh, unchivalrous, huh? They don't let us wear hats in school. Can't wear hats. Can't wear them. Yeah, but you're not in school all the time. I don't know what you're talking about. I feel like we are. But, um, I don't know. Do you hold the door for them? Yeah. Can I get a verification on that statement? Lady, has he ever held the door for you? Anyone? Faux chivalry. F-A-U-X, faux. 
not like the enemy of chivalry, which apparently you may be also. All right, what else do we got to do here? We got to check some things. I don't know if this one breaks down off the top of my head. I don't know, two, two and what? Oh, 38. Eight. That's a two again, two and 17. No, two and what? 19. 19, thank you. All right, so can we simplify that at all? Yeah, we got two. Okay, so then what does this first term become? Okay, and then 125 goes down to, oops, just 25. Five and five. All right, so then the second term becomes five I. All right, so here's a tough question. Well, I don't know if it's tough, but can we go any further? Well, so in a weird way, you could, like, you could factor out an I if you wanted, so you kind of could, but that, that there's no reason to. The only way I would go further than this is if it was uh, the radicals were also the same. Okay.